Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, we'll continue our last lesson in constructing this lower third reveal. We got the basic animation set up, and then we jumped inside the designer to take a look at all the great features that we found in there. So I'd like to take what we've learned in that lesson and immediately start applying it. So the only thing that we're focusing on right now is the overall design and look of the particles. My design is going to be some large circular particles, and we're actually going to use two different systems. One particle system is going to have a solid color, and then on top of that, we'll have a more colorful particle system resulting in a pretty cool looking design. So the first thing I probably want to do is increase the particle size. So I'll select the size rotation block and turn up the overall particle size. Let's say I set this to 75. Right now, all of the particles that are being generated are the exact same size. If you'd like to mix it up a little bit and have some variance in the size, you can turn up the size random. So this will not only increase, but decrease the size of your particles. So you'll have some particles larger than 75 and some a little bit smaller than 75. Also, what they do over their life can be controlled in this same block. You'll notice that as I generate particles, as they come to the end of their lifespan, as they disappear, they simply pop off. They don't scale or fade out. So if I'd like them to scale out, I can go to my size over life chart right here. This graphs the size of the particle in the y-axis and their time over life from the beginning of their life to the end of their life. So I can either draw in this chart right here using a pencil tool, or I can click on the Bezier curve and use the B splines to adjust the size over life. Or there's some quick and easily accessible curves right in here under the presets that we can load. Now take note, there's a difference between these presets and the block presets. Block presets store everything that is in this block. So the size of the particle, size randomness, and all of the other stuff down here, such as the particle rotation. These presets are only storing the curve right here. So if I double click on this and try to load in, let's say, a size rotation block preset, such as this bell curve, Notice that the particle size changes because the particle size is stored with the block. So that's why you'll find a couple different ways to load curve presets. So I'm going to undo and just go back to what I had before. I had my particle size set to 75, size randomness set to 25, and this nice ease in and ease out curve. In terms of the overall design, I'd like some very solid, crisp circles for my particle, rather than this sort of feathered out wispy kind of particle look. So I'll go to the particle type here, and I can leave it set to its default of sphere, but down here under particle feather, I'll turn this particle feather to zero, and this gives us a nice crisp edge on our sphere. Next, I'd like to change the color, so I'll go to the color block, click on the color, and load in this sort of turquoise kind of look I was using before, and that seems to work. Now I think overall we could probably use fewer particles per second, but let's just click apply and get this far and see how this is working out. Okay, first problem I see is that we can't actually reveal the text if the particles are not on top of the text. So I'm going to take this particular solid and drag it on top. And we could probably use just a little bit less in terms of the particles per second. So I'm going to make sure to put myself right at that keyframe because if I make changes elsewhere, it's just going to add in keyframe, because that's just how After Effects works. So right here, under particles per second, I'll lower this to maybe 50. Now, in terms of how this looks, I think having particles come from a very single point isn't quite ideal for this type of reveal. I'd like the particles, as they're born, to be in a slightly larger area than just a single point. So I'm going to go to the emitter type and set this to a sphere. So this is going to emit particles in a spherical area around the emitter point. Now that area in which the particles are born is defined right here in the emitter size XYZ. So your particles can be born anywhere in this 500 pixel wide and tall and deep area around your emitter point. I don't need it to be that big. I'm going to bring this down just so that the particles generally are staying over that text area. So it looks like maybe around somewhere between 225 to 50 or so. 
I think that's working out. Let's go back over to the designer. And what I'm going to do is take this system and simply duplicate it. And I'm going to create another system that shares many of the same properties, but has a different color mapping and different sizes for the particles. So I'll go to the master system here and select duplicate system. So now we can see if I change this color, we have two systems overlapping, but they are using the uh, identical settings. In fact, even the overall randomness is being shared in between the two systems. If I go to the particle size block and I turn this down, we'll see now that the particles of system two are smaller, the particles of the master system are left alone. So if we're being efficient and we're being mindful of the multiple systems here, we could start going through and removing some of these blocks that we don't need. So everything's being inherited by system two from the master system where we need it. So like the particle type, the emitter type, and the motion. So the motion controls things like the particle velocity, how fast it moves from that point where they are born. Everything is being inherited by system two from the master system where we want it. And just to be consistent, I'll also remove that opacity block, even though we're not really using opacity. So now I can change the color of system two to make it a lot more interesting. So I could go up here to the set color at, and rather than using a solid one single color for the entire lifespan of the particle, I could go to random from gradient, and this will activate the gradient right here, and it will randomly choose colors from this gradient and apply those to the particles. Just like the size over life chart, there is a quick set of presets in here that we can access, or we can go to our block presets and load one of these presets right here. I've actually stored the gradient from the previous design example that I was using. So I'm gonna load that up. And I think we're looking pretty good. Let's hit apply. And as I play through this, still might be a slightly high particle count. Being that we've removed the extra blocks from system two, we can easily change this by changing the particles per second in the master system. Now, one thing I want you to take note of is what system I am in when I leave. So if I'm in system two and I hit apply, this is going to continue revealing system two in the effect controls. If I leave the master system selected, and I hit apply, this is going to leave the master system visible in the effect controls. If at any time you want to change this, you can simply go up here to show system and select which system you'd like to see. So in this case, I want to look at the master system and change the particles per second in that master system. And again, I want to make sure I'm parked on that keyframe right here. Instead of 50, we'll set this to 25. One other thing that I think could use a little bit of tweaking, as the particles animate on, they continue drifting to the right just a little bit too much for my taste. The reason they're doing this is because the emitter is moving over time, and that velocity of the emitter is being inherited by the particles, and that's defined right here under velocity from motion. So the particles will inherit velocity of the movement of the emitter. That defaults to a 20% inheritance of the velocity, but in this case, I'm gonna lower that to maybe 10 so that these just don't move quite so much. That's pretty good. Another thing I think we can do is lower the overall lifespan of the particles. So I'll go to the particle section right here and take this from three full seconds and lower this to maybe one and a half seconds. So this dictates how long the particles will actually live before they disappear. And in general, anytime we are working with particular, I would highly suggest having a little bit of life randomness so that everything doesn't have the same lifespan. Now that we've lowered the lifespan and lowered the velocity from motion, I think we could probably bring the overall particle velocity up just a little bit, just to give a little bit more movement. I'm gonna set this back to its default setting of 100. So that brings us to the end of the 
basic overview of Particular. And we've covered a lot of material. We've covered the basics of the designer window. We've talked about multiple systems in particular and how these all work together. We've covered some basics in terms of the particle section as well as the emitter section. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk a lot more detail about this emitter section because there's a lot more to it that we haven't discussed at all. So we'll move into different areas of the emitter section in the next lesson. My name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.